this unusual design is from a very rare Bible cover in the ownership of the Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust in Stratford-on-Avon, Shakespeare's birthplace and home. I've particularly enjoyed recreating this corner of a design from the Bible cover. It's a combination of silk embroidery with metal thread, but the silk is so degraded that it actually looks very dull and it doesn't reflect light in the way it would when it was new. So to create a historic look, I've used very fine Renaissance walls, which look like, very like the silk on the original as it stands today. When we recreated this piece, I was down at Stratford-on-Avon and I was able to spend several days looking at the Bible and that's a really very rare opportunity and we took our retreats there as well and um, it's really so delicate and lovely. I've actually made this design slightly bigger because really the original was made by professionals and it is tiny so to make this more approachable it is a slightly bigger scale. And also the Elizabethan braid stitch down the centre over that stem and along the top. Um, I've worked a much easier version that Alison Cole and Meredith Willett uh, taught and retaught to me, but it was introduced to me by Alison Cole of Australia. And it's an easy, easy, easy Elizabethan braid stitch because I find working in metal thread quite challenging and also because I'm quite dyslexic, I find that stitch incredibly difficult and I have to concentrate so hard that I don't really enjoy it. So this is quite a nice introduction to working in a braid stitch. Um, the other thing that I liked about this is the Renaissance walls, many, many different colors of this, these walls are so bright and clear and beautiful, and they are exactly the same colours as the original. The illustrated instructions are, as ever, bespoke to each kit, and we spend many, many weeks and months actually creating these, testing them, and making sure that you really are, you really have a workshop experience in that you're actually seeing where each thread starts and which, e where, the needle comes up on one side and goes down the other. The journey of the seeding stitch going up and down the strawberries is quite important as well. A lot of people are daunted by long and short soft shading and this is detailed very carefully across several pages. So there's a, a full page of 12 illustrations for just the wing on its own. And then very large scale illustrations for the chain stitch there with a braid work down the side and then if you are ambitious this is the alternative braid stitch and this is the, the uh, original braid stitch that was worked on the piece so if you like a challenge and lots of people do then this is for you but I would advise you to actually create it using a piece of canvas and parcel string to get the technique before you start, which is how Jane Lemon, who is an absolute legend in the UK, um, how she taught me how to use the difficult stitches I was struggling with. Because of the metal thread, I struggled slightly to know what to do with this design other than to frame it. So I actually had a box and um, it had an acorn design in before and it was due for a change. So I've used this box lid and some mount board and this can go behind there and you can actually just use ordinary cellophane to frame it with and then put it in because that will just keep it from getting too dusty but of course you'll be able to see the design behind it if you want or you can just leave it without the cellophane if you prefer. Mm -hmm.